Norbury Station opened in 1878, though the railway line through here opened in 1862. And although I'm starting my walk today here at Norbury, we will be heading into Norwood, which refers to the ancient Great Northwood, which would have covered a lot of ground here in South London. And we start the walk off in Norbury Park in the borough of Croydon. I've straight away come across one of the stones of Croydon. These are scattered about the borough. I've seen one of these on the walk down to Wadden Station on a walk not too long ago. And here in Norbury Park, you have the waters of the Norbury Brook down there, which is a tributary of the River Wandle. But just on the other side of the road, once it leaves the park, it changes name to become the River Graveny. And I've just learned that here in Norbury Park used to be a horse racing track, and the brook itself was used as a jump that the horses would take as part of one of the races. It is an urban London walk today, so there's a lot of hopping between green spaces. And the next one we'll be visiting is here, Big In Wood, which is a, a little reminder, a little remnant of that old Great North Wood, which I mentioned earlier. Oh, that's perfect timing. Information board and a map here of the extent of Great North Wood, covering a lot of South London, like Crystal Palace, all the way up towards New Cross. And we're right on the edge of it here in Big In Wood. There's Norbury Station. Ah, I didn't realise I was on the capital ring here because I just don't remember Big In Wood because it's quite small. It's the section from Crystal Palace. Our next green space is the lawns. Good view of the Croydon transmitter tower up there, which is in a, another remnant of the Great North Wood, a little location called Bewley. Bewley Heights? Yes, because uh, this place is Beulah Spa. This is where a spa and gardens used to be visited by Queen Victoria several times. Used to be amazing all sorts in here. I should try and find a location of the well of the spa. I managed to find it. it took a couple of minutes of trampling around through the grass here. Here it is, the exact location of the Beulah Spa, 14 feet deep. You can see the actual uh, four years that Queen Victoria visited it. Well, you get a good but misty view of the IKEA chimneys over there at Croydon. Leaving Spa Wood. I thought this building looked very Victorian, and it is. It's the entrance lodge into the old Royal Buda Spa. And appropriately, the harvester opposite is called the Buda Spa. Passing through Upper Norwood Recreation Ground now, which is on quite a high ridge of land. And what you usually come across uh, when up high is a lot of springs, and we've seen evidence of that uh, with the old spa. But what you also get are sources of rivers, and I would say that one of South London's uh, most principal rivers, even though it's now lost buried beneath the street and incorporated into the sewer system is the River Ephra, which rises just over there near to Crystal Palace. It runs through Norwood into Brixton and goes into the Thames uh, by Vauxhall Bridge. And it runs right alongside Upper Norwood Recreation Ground here. And we're gonna come across uh, the route of the River Ephra a couple of more times on today's walk. Um, by the way, winter coat is out for the first time it's a bit of a chill in the air though, uh, walking up to, this, to these uh, high pieces of land can get quite warm. <laughs> Opposite Upper Norwood Recreation Ground you have Convent Wood, but you can't go in here, it's a private wood. I suspect of course again remnant of the Great North Wood, but we are on uh, the Capital Ring, we're intersecting this path again and memories of it are starting to come back to me now because I feel like it was along this road here that I found a sealed Greg's drink and I thought, well, I might as well take that. <laughs> I 
And whilst up on a high ridge of land, it's almost inevitable that at some point you'll come across a view of London. If you pass from the borough of Croydon into the borough of Lambeth here in Norbury Park, and this is where, well, perhaps on another day you would get a better view of London. It's very misty today, so the, the buildings are very hard to spot. It isn't hard to spot, it's that uh, old tower block in the middle there, which kind of ruins the view a little. Might not see much, of the towers of London, but I can at least see the Crystal Palace transmitter tower, different to the Croydon one. Made it up beside Gypsy Hill Station now. This is one which I have not been to before. There's a nice little garden area here with a, a classic British railway sign, which looks original. That looks great. But what this station also has is a station cat named Fanny. <laughs> Across Long Meadow, away from Gypsy Hill Station now, I've never seen a bus stop where it's labelled the bus route number at the very end of it, not the beginning. We seem to have moved into another London borough as well, Southwark now. A complete unexpected surprise next as I came across Gypsy Hill Brewery where there seemed to be a market on. I've come across a sundial here. That's in memorial to the resistance heroes. Oh, I can see myself in the reflection. Hello. I'm in Gypsy Road and I've come across a stink pipe here, which is an indication that a sewer is essentially running underneath your feet or a river which has become a sewer as brilliantly there is a plaque here which marks the fact that the hidden river Ephra is beneath your feet I wish all of London's lost rivers was marked with a plaque I've never seen this for any other river before that's fantastic you can kind of tell by looking at this road that we're down in a river valley as well I guess that's why there's high ridges of land around here. It's formed from the River Ephra. I've moved from Gypsy Hill into West Norwood here by its bus garage, where I ended my very first day traveling all of the routes in London when I did the number two down from Marylebone. There still is the old Ariba logo as well. Norwood bus garage. Oh, it's kind of fitting I guess that I would have ended my first day on the buses here and I also would have come through here on the last day of the buses as that SL6 now part of the Superloop was the X68 and was my last bus route. Well I guess technically where that first day ended wasn't the bus garage but here at West Norwood railway station. West Norwood Station along with Gypsy Hill both opened in 1856 but until 1886 was known as Lower Norwood instead and I've never been here if it wasn't to do bus routes and that's been quite some years now. Uh, the whole reason why I started doing the bus routes in the first place was to explore London by bus because uh, I had never uh, travelled around London if it wasn't on the tube or the overground stuff that was on the tube map uh, and so coming here to West Norwood on uh, bus route 2 on the very first day was something uh, quite different for me. I'd never travelled on the suburban rail network in South London for example, uh, I'd never really heard of West Norwood, I didn't know how I was really going to get home from here, I guess I just rocked up to the station wherever the train was going to go, whatever London terminal it was going to go to, that's the one I would use. Uh, but rather uniquely for West Norwood, um, you can go either into Victoria or London Bridge. I think I was originally going to get the London Bridge train and it was cancelled and I got the Victoria one, if I'm remembering correctly. It was eight years ago. <laughs> At the time, I didn't have the aim or ambition to visit all the stations in the country. Uh, that came much later, but in a way, you could argue it kind of started there at West Norwood because 
I hadn't traveled on any of the London suburban rail network before. National rail was something that I wasn't familiar with because it was always just the tube for me, essentially. So it's quite nice for me to uh, have come back to West Norwood today and to do a bit of an explore around here because my adventures have uh, kind of evolved from exploring by bus to exploring on foot. This I would say is probably the iconic view of West Norwood, St. Luke's Church right beside where the road splits to form the one-way junction. But actually there's a few nice buildings dotted around here such as this public library, there's another library across the road and a picture house. I also appreciate that the pub next to the station is called the Great North Wood. What I've come to have a look at here in West Norwood though is its cemetery as it is one of the Victorian Magnificent Seven. Bunch of very very old graves, it feels almost abandoned. I do wonder sometimes in these very old cemeteries if there are people living in London who have relatives buried here but they just don't know of them because perhaps they're like a great or great great grandfather who you've just never really heard of. Not that you'd really know if they are buried here. The Magnificent Seven Cemeteries were built because at the time uh, space was running out in Paris churchyards in London. So they opened up uh, several larger cemeteries more on the outskirts of London. This one in particular opened in 1837. Uh, and is full of uh, rather magnificent structures, to be honest. Um, I feel the Victorians were much more grand uh, in their grave design than we are nowadays. Um, maybe just because people can't afford it anymore. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can name all the Magnificent Seven cemeteries. Uh, you have Tower Hamlets, uh, you have Abney Park in Stoke Newington, um, you have Kensal Green, uh, you have Highgate, though you actually have to uh, pay to go in the Highgate one. Uh, I've only walked around the outside of it before. Um, Nunhead, this one, West Norwood, and the only one I've not been to is Brompton. Uh, perhaps at some point during the winter we'll do a walk through Brompton Cemetery. And if you're following uh, the route of the River Ephra, you would have to come and visit West Norwood Cemetery because it's actually passing underneath here. Uh, and a bit of Victorian folklore, uh, this was an interesting story that I discovered uh, when planning for this walk today, is that uh, once a coffin was found floating in the River Thames and it was traced back to here at West Norwood Cemetery. Apparently the ground under a grave had subsided and the coffin had fell into the waters of the river Ephra <laughs> and went along its entire route into the Thames at Vauxhall. Isn't that just a really bizarre story? I've said before in a recent walk that a lot of cemeteries only have one exit and entrance. So I've done a loop around, I've come out, and I'm now walking alongside the perimeter wall of West Norwood Cemetery. And I've come across old public toilets here, which, yeah, are completely boarded up nowadays. Uh, I reckon that would be quite creepy if I managed to get in through that door. And a little ways along the road, there's a stink pipe. So this must be the River Ephra running beneath my feet. No plaque to mark it this time though. Unless the plaque is uh, hidden beneath all the autumn leaves here. I <laughs> oh, know, I have come across one. It's a little bit up from the stink pipe though. I oh know, it mustn't be a stink pipe then because there's a second one here. And again, it's not near the plaque of the Ephra. I've moved from West Norwood into West Dulwich now. This is another station in the London suburbs which I've not used. It opened in 1863, known as Just Dulwich, but renamed to West Dulwich in 1926.
come into Bel Air Park where you get what I think is the only glimpse of the River Ephra out in the open as it's passing through this park here. It's quite cool to see uh, a river which is, for most of its route, buried underground. There's a great property here in Bel Air Park as well. I didn't want to leave the park without coming over to get a shot of it. This is the Dulwich Picture Gallery. Opened in 1817, it is England's oldest art gallery. I get to walk around the grounds of it here. Part of the garden is actually closed. I had to walk further up and use a different entrance. Dulwich is quite an affluent part of London, which I feel gets quite overlooked sometimes. I'm enjoying walking through the village here past some of the independent shops. It's quite nice. It has a real vibe to it. I've come around into Dulwich Park now, just as the sun is setting. Not that the sun has been out all day. And it's quite an extensive park for it to be my last one of the day. But I do have a bit of a walk towards the station from here. The station's not on that sign, by the way. <laughs> oh, a bit of a shame. Would have liked to have taken the boardwalk across the lake here in Dulwich Park. Oh, well. I, th I think I've done it before anyways. A couple of final points of interest as the light is fading here in Dulwich. But actually, I think this is a perfect time to do this stretch of the walk as it's starting to get dark. As I get to see what already is the magnificent Dulwich College building here be lit up with its clock tower as well. Looks quite cool. And the last point of interest is that here in College Road, you have the last toll gate in operation in London. Costs £1.20 to drive your car through here. I'm a pedestrian, I get to go through for free, but <laughs> that's quite a cool thing to come across at the end of our walk. I've walked up College Road to Sydenham Hill Station, which seems like a fitting station to end this walk. It's got hill in its name. We've been to a lot of hills today. Uh, the woods are just over there, Sydenham Hill Woods, part of the Great North Wood, of course. There's actually a tunnel uh, that the trains uh, go through, obviously, underneath the woods, um, though I feel like it will be quite hard to spot right now, even though it's literally right there. Uh, just because of how dark it's gotten so quickly. Uh, Crystal Palace is also just over there as well. That was even in the station name. Sydenham Hill for Crystal Palace is what it was known as until 1936 uh, when the palace burned down. But what a fantastic walk that was uh, across the ancient Great North Wood, places like Norwood and Dulwich. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I enjoy my South London walks. I enjoy my urban London walks in the winter, so that was a nice blend of both there. This was also a walk that went from a station in London that I've never used to a station in London which I've never used, which is uh, slowly becoming a rarity. I don't have many more of them left, although there are still quite a few London stations I've still not been to. Oh yeah, I've heard that the service through here, the Victoria to Orpington trains, are going to go from two an hour to four an hour in the December timetable change, which is going to be uh, good. If that was already a thing, um, I would already be on a train because <laughs> I've had uh, just over a 15 minute wait for my train. But that's okay. It's quite cool being here in the dark. <laughs> At the very end of it, not the beginning, 